Since the publication of Sharp's Eagle in the late 1970s, the Richard Sharp novels have gone from strength to strength. The fictional adventures of a British Rifles officer in the Peninsula War have become a phenomenon in popular literature, elevating their author Bernard Cornwall to international best-selling status and winning a dedicated army of fans. In May of 1999, Bernard agreed to lead some of these fans on a journey to the very locations in Spain and Portugal which inspired the novels. From fortresses and battlefields to remote villages and bridges unchanged from the days of the Napoleonic Wars, it was to be a journey back in time to the dawn of the 19th century and the age of Napoleon to Sharp's Peninsula. I was a kid and I read Hornblower and um, when I finished all the Hornblower books I wanted more so I found the non-fiction the history books and through them I discovered Wellington and then for years after that I wanted to read Hornblower on land I thought someone's got to write this stuff and I used to haunt the bookshops looking for the Sharp series basically and then a little light went off in my head thinking gosh there's an idea and I didn't want anybody to write it then because I thought I'm going to write it one day. So that's how it started. It started way back when I was 14, 15. Sharp's exploits are based closely around the true events of Britain's war with Napoleonic France from 1808 to 1814. One by one, the Imperial French armies in the peninsula were defeated by a small but highly professional British army under Sir Arthur Wellesley, later the Duke of Wellington, and the crucial victories at Talavera, Salamanca and Vittoria eventually paved the road to the final defeat of Napoleon at Waterloo in 1815. I'd been researching the Peninsular Wars, or the Napoleonic Wars, for years. It was a hobby, I suppose. And, and then when I thought about Sharp, it, it became very focused. And when I first came to the Peninsula, it was all to do with Sharp. Uh, but I, st I actually don't think I... I don't know if I'd have ever written it if I'd not met Judy, who's my wife. And uh, she's an American. And I, she couldn't come and live in Britain for all sorts of reasons. And I could go and live in America, but I couldn't get a job. Um, so I very airily said, oh, don't worry, I'll write a book. And I still think that if, in fact, I'd not met Judy, I might never have, uh, have written it. So she was the catalyst. And so it was after I'd met her and after I decided I would, would go to America um, that I visited the peninsula and went around all the battlefields that I thought I was going to write about. I've made out lots of other visits since, but that first one was the big, big visit. From the very first novel in the series, Bernard tempered his documentary research by visiting the actual battlefields about which he was to write, exploring the historical landscape of Sharp by tracing the very footsteps of Wellington's army, something few other authors had previously attempted. It's enormously useful to visit the battlefields. You, you get so much background, you get a feel for the place, you, you, you get an idea of what they saw. So I've made it a rule ever since the beginning, always. Now I, I have broken the rule. I didn't go to Toulouse because there's nothing there. It's, it's, they've built, built the hill over. Um, but every other battlefield I've been to. For this special tour of Sharp's Peninsula, Midas Historic Tour